Business Now is brought to you by the Information Technology Association of America and in part by the global consulting firm Booz Allen Hamilton and by Bearing Point and in cooperation with the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, PBS, and Maryland Public Television. Viruses, worms, spam, and bots. Sounds like a bad law firm, but really they're little buggers that are maliciously placed in our computers and which have been a primary cause for our love-hate relationship with the machines that seemingly control our lives. These intrusions can come from numerous sources, websites you visit, email you open but shouldn't have, but the fastest growing cyber threat is referred to as distributed denial of service or DDoS. DDoS is not a common term today, but experts say that with the enormous increase and effectiveness of these attacks, we'll be hearing the term far more often. DDoS is already crippling the computer networks of politicians, governments, businesses. It's even a weapon used by organized crime. It's been cited as a potential vehicle for catastrophic terrorist attacks. What do the Colorado Rockies, Al-Qaeda terrorists, U.S. senators, video gamers, and the Baltic country of Estonia have in common? Distributed denial of service, or DDoS attacks. DDoS attacks prevent legitimate users from using an Internet service by flooding the network with more traffic than it can handle. A simplified example of a DDoS attack would be millions of spam emails sent to your PC. Your Internet access would crash before the spam even reached your desktop. Al-Qaeda and organized crime have also entered the DDoS world of massive terrorist attacks. Not defending against DDoS attacks carries enormous implications. Former CIA director James Woolsey recently shared his thoughts on how terrorists could disable the nation's electric grid. Parts of our infrastructure, such as the electricity grid, could be used to, against us uh, even without any uh, weapons of mass destruction or anything like that just by terrorists uh, uh, taking the grid down. If this communications network is taken down, it really doesn't matter how reliable is the electric grid itself. These attacks also threaten private industry. And as they become more frequent, some e-commerce companies have been unable to conduct business for days at a time. According to Information Week, Amazon, Yahoo, and the content delivery giant Akamai were taken down for hours, not by quality of attacks, but quantity. Today, those outages can last even longer. And in a network business, if you're out of business for five days, you're pretty much out of business. It's no longer that you can sleep it out or do something or wait. You can't. You have to put in real life solution into those situations. Traditionally, DDoS attacks have been defended by software and hardware inside the network. But according to Andreas Antonopoulos, Internet security analyst and senior vice president and co-founder of Nimertes Research, this strategy leaves entire sections of the network vulnerable to attack. You have to put security controls within the primary stream of traffic before it reaches your servers. Otherwise, Putting your servers out there naked is a recipe for disaster. Kwok Lee, president and CEO of RealRay, believes that the RealRay management team has leveraged its collective Internet experience to create a unique solution to the DDoS problem. It has developed and is now manufacturing and delivering hardware and software platforms that filter DDoS attack traffic before it even enters the network. According to Kwok Lee, this DDoT defense is unique in the industry. Today we are the forerunner in bringing this new idea of putting a solution in front of the network instead of behind the network. And I believe that that's the only way that you could take out a bulk attack of any sorts into a network. The executive team of RealRay has worked together for over a decade and is recognized for its highly successful innovations. Bill Wilson co-founded RealRay with Lee and is chairman of the board. Previously, Wilson and Lee co-founded Split Rock Services, a publicly traded network company that sold for $2 billion. Quackley also co-founded Uri Systems, which was purchased by Lucent for $1 billion. Nitin Mayrotra is CTO of RealRay. He previously founded Miricast, an IPTV company, after leaving management positions at Lucent and Unisys. 
He then joined Quark at URI and now RioRay. Our secret sauce, it's a, it's a set of algorithms that do multiple layers of tests on the traffic. You can derive a lot of information about traffic by analyzing the packet flows and looking at just packets without looking at the underlying applications that they represented, which was different than what had been the viewpoint until then. It's a combination of software smarts, you know, intelligence, if you like, or uh, a good algorithm, as well as uh, an efficient hardware platforms that can handle these things that's been designed and architected in a way that it can withstand these types of attacks. The IT professionals and network operators charged with uninterrupted operations and security of their networks need to be able to trust that any product they put in front of their routers is both accurate and reliable. When you put yourself in front of the network as the very first piece of equipment, that goes before any other piece of equipment in the network. You have to be a highly reliable solution. Quark demonstrates RealRay's approach to defending critical IT networks against a real-life DDoS attack on a video server. This allows us to actually see the impact. As you can see is that when we launch the attack, the CPU utilization would pick up very high, and also at the same time, the actions of the movie stopped. The reason is because the attacker is now putting a lot of packets into the network, causing the video server to look at those attack packets instead of servicing the real service. And therefore, nothing is going on. The denial of service is very successful. Now, if you take a look at it, we are now about a minute 30 into the DDoS attack. And the movie has already come back alive. And you could see is that the CPU utilization is beginning to recover. His customer is back in service automatically and without any intervention on his part. Despite their history of success with first-to-market, highly sought-after answers to tough problems, they're cautious about their entry into a familiar but ever-evolving Internet war. The challenge for the front-runner is to maintain a lead in the market and to build the market without letting the technology overcome them. Pat McGittigan, the Vice President of Business Development, previously worked with both Bill and Quark as General Counsel and Senior Vice President at Split Rock. We're seeing signs of success as we move along. Um, you know, as the continuing began with just a concept and an idea, so an invention, so to speak, and we move from a beta product to now a product that actually is in the market, it works. We say it does certain things and it does do those things quite well. The business of network security is one where adaptation and rapid change coexist. Some security companies are managing this by trying to handle every aspect of the security process. Others are focusing their efforts on just one segment. We are specialized in the DDoS portion of the thing, and by means of not trying to be a solution to everyone, to everything, uh, we are now acquiring an enormous amount of knowledge on DDoS traffic how people attack networks, and what are the techniques used for the attacking of the network. I'm Len Divert, Business Now.